Well, it is a hurricane and it is still gaining in strength mm -hmm. and it's still affecting us in uh, potentially harmful ways. Yeah, there's several different ways it can have an impact on us tonight. We've got the uh, feeder vans that are going to yeah. produce some very heavy rainfall in a short period of time. There's one moving through St. Pete right now. St. Pete Airport just reported a wind gust up to 60 miles an hour, 60 mile an hour wind gust. And I saw one of those driving to work today as a large area of rain was moving in into western portions of Manatee County. It was wind gusts up to 50 to 60 miles an hour. So they, this is still a, pot a potential dangerous storm and will be so through the night and tomorrow morning, eventually subsiding by midday tomorrow. We still have to deal with some storm surge, too. That's going to be really piling up the water after midnight tonight along the area beaches and also throughout the bays and rivers and streams. If you couple that with rainfall that comes down excessively at times, that rain has nowhere to go but just to pile up on the roadway. So good advice. We heard from the director of the EOC in Manatee County, Don Hermy. Uh, stay indoors. If you don't have to go anywhere, so stay, stay indoors. Uh, stay tuned to ABC7. We'll bring you up today if anything breaks as far as that goes through the programming tonight. Uh, right now, that first band is going through. That's the band that produced that 60 mile hour wind gust at the St. Pete Airport uh, just about 10 minutes ago. And then more of that heavy rainfall heading into Manatee County now, into Bradenton. Also, it uh, looks like uh, the southern end of Anna Maria, Longbow Key. Some pretty heavy storms now at State Road 70 and I-75. And then lesser showers down near Osprey and Siesta Key. But this is uh, what we're going to see tonight. Periods of heavy rainfall followed by relative calm. We saw Bo Beth at Anna Maria at 5 o'clock saying, oh, nothing's going on here. It's pretty quiet. Still some standing water around. And all of a sudden, at 6 o'clock, we lose our live shot because there's too much rain and wind around. That's what the uh, story is with these things. These bands come on through. You get the relatively uh, calm conditions, still kind of windy. And then the next band develops. You can see this one developing. It's so far off the coast that you don't see the tail end, but that rain could extend a lot farther out here. But it's the curvature of the earth that doesn't allow us to see uh, past a couple hundred miles offshore at this point. But look at this. This heavy rain falling right now into Hernando, Pasco, into Hillsborough County. And uh, we had a tornado warning earlier in this area up near Spring, Spring Hill, southward all the way down uh, to the northern sections of Hillsborough. The area in red, this was a uh, actual a tropical storm warning that was placed into effect this afternoon because the wind field of this hurricane now expanded to the right. Uh, to the dirty side, if you will. And the area of flood watch will stay with us through tonight and tomorrow as more storms are anticipated. We're not going to get the uh, widespread rainfall 10 inches, I don't think, but we still could see an additional two to four inches of rainfall with the ground saturated. Uh, it won't take much to cause some more flooding problems. Now, as far as Hermine, Hurricane Hermine is concerned. Uh, 75 mile hour winds is expected to get up to 80 before it makes landfall. It appears that it's moving north northeast, but I've been watching the radar pictures and it may have a slight drift to more of a northeasterly fashion, which would put it closer to our coast. But uh, nonetheless, it's going to cause all sorts of power outages, trees down and much damage across much of the panhandle of Florida, as that's where the strongest winds will be. Then eventually kind of hangs around for three days out there in the Atlantic, just off coast of uh, New Jersey and New York. That's that tornado watch. We're not included in the watch right now, so that's a good sign, but uh, don't put your guard down because these storms, as I mentioned, can produce brief isolated tornadoes and even water spots very quickly. And that storm uh, surge threat, this is a new product coming from the National Hurricane Center. It shows you on the scale here, it's in the low end, but we are going to see it. We already had tides running about two and a half feet above average during high tide. And we'll see that again, I think, maybe even more so tonight at around 2 a.m. And so we'll see that flooding problems that we see the water rushing over the docks and uh, maybe uh, threatening some homes that are pretty close to the water. As far as wave heights go, this is pretty incredible. 24 foot wave height here. I know when I was flying over in the Hurricane Hunter uh, with Ivan, the waves were up to 50 feet high. So this is uh, not that, not an Ivan, but it's certainly causing some problems in coastal erosion along the west coast of Florida and will do so uh, for the next 24 hours at least. The seas will eventually calm down a little bit, a moderate chop by Saturday. Boating's out of the question for tomorrow. Wind gust speed will stay high here through this evening and um, possibly through the uh, morning hours on Friday, subsiding somewhat as we move into the afternoon hours. The winds will start to uh, subside somewhat tomorrow afternoon. Uh, buoy, look at these buoy. These are wind gusts. This one right there at Venice Pier got up to 47 miles an hour. Now it's at 51. Uh, recent gust right there out of the southwest now. That would indicate we're getting that southwesterly flow around this system, and that always causes a tendency to pile the water up much higher near the area beaches. So this is an interesting uh, turnout just in the last five minutes there. A gust of 51 miles an hour reported at the Venice Pier, 
and the wave heights continue to grow. Well, the enhanced trop tropical satellite imagery is showing the system uh, ga gaining strength, too. Right now, as we speak, you can see a, an explosion of storms right in the center. And that's not good news for the folks in its path because that's where typically the hurricane force winds are. And they're going to be up to 80 miles an hour and possibly even some higher gusts. So an interesting night tonight uh, for all of us here along the west coast of Florida and especially into the Big Bend area of Florida with winds expected to be hurricane force. Well, here's that seven day forecast as we see it. Heavy rainfall periodically throughout the night tonight, tomorrow morning. Much better weather on Saturday with a 60% chance for storms. And then we'll have a pretty good Labor Day weekend after that. Back to you.